Hey guys, got the 1930 Model A back in the shop. Uh, had it in the other shop over the winter. It was nice to have a place where it was heated to store this guy. But uh, yeah, time to get some stuff done on it. It's got, it's got no glass anywhere other than a windshield. Uh, I did go get some glass cut. I got my guides for the, the door windows, the seals for the back and the, the quarter windows. I gotta pull the fuel tank. That I'm not looking forward to. Um, front crank pulley. Well, the only crank pulley. That one's broken. So it's got quite a vibration to it. I have a replacement for that as well. This guy right here, brand new crank pulley. Uh, brakes are sticking. This has still got the mechanical brakes on it. Uh, I gotta do some wiring. The horn doesn't work. Headlights don't work. I've got the parts for the headlights. Hopefully the horn just maybe a wiring issue. All the wiring in this thing is uh, located in this guy here. Back down in there, that's that's everything that leads from the steering wheel because that's where all the controls are. The uh, This is a headlight switch. This is the horn, obviously. But yeah, got some stuff to do on it. Get it ready for the season. It's got a lot that needs to be done eventually. Like there's a bunch of Bondo here. That had popped out. Uh, some more Bondo there. Big giant bubble on this side. This one here, like I can, like it's, it's loose. Like it's ready to pop off. So I'm gonna fix that sort of stuff up. Probably paint the wheels up. My spares don't match at all. I've got new rubber, but the only problem with the rubber is the blue dye that they put on the wide white. It's been on there for I don't know how many years and I'm having a heck of a time getting that off. So I might just paint them. Um, what else does this guy need? I got new lenses for the back. Just, you know, accessory. It, it's got the stop right in here. So I'm gonna try and get that to work with a signal. I've got a, a vintage style signal switch here. Uh, this guy's old. I'm gonna put that guy in there, that way it can run signals. Debating whether or not to use my Kawa lights as a signal, or there's actually a, a dual filament. There's a, a bulb up here and then the headlight bulb. I might convert that to signal if I can. Uh, what else does this guy need? Not a whole lot, to be honest with you. The roof's got some damage to it, just from, from wear. Uh, the visor's got a big crease in it. But once I take the material off, and I have replacement material for it, I just gotta find this, this prop, this kind of welting for it. The stuff that I got with the kit is an aluminum, which apparently is the original, but I don't know how I would make this curve here without collapsing it. So I'm gonna try find this. I think they call it quick welt. Uh, so I'm gonna wait for a super hot day so I can sit outside and melt, basically mold to the roof. Put that in. I don't have a handle for the, the rumble seat. But all in all, this thing's really, really decent shape. I still gotta figure out the proper way to start this thing. Um, the carburetor on this guy, I believe I got the float set too high, which is obviously on the other side here. Let's just see here. So yeah, it's, it's an updraft carburetor. And for some reason, when I pull out the choke, which is this guy here, before it fires up, there's a giant gush of gas, hits the floor, and then it starts. Obviously not supposed to work that way. Uh, looks like I have some issues with my spark plugs. I might need new uh, crush gaskets on them. I'm gonna retorque the heads, or the head, make sure that it's all good. I see I got an exhaust leak there. I believe I got another gasket for it. Uh, oil pan leaks, which these things are notorious for. And I'm wondering if it's leaking because of my crank pulley being 
we, we had broken it and welded it so it's not balanced so it probably took up my front seal but I can get that all straightened out so let's just see if this thing is gonna start I know it's gonna start it doesn't start as easy as, as I would like it to I might consider doing a 12 volt conversion on it but let's just give it a go and see what happens turn the fuel on So with this guy, you got to fully retard the timing. This side is your throttle control, uh, your choke and your air fuel mixture here. I'm, I'm missing a piece here because I believe it's supposed to stay out when I pull it. But anyway, key. Uh, neutral, starter button is way up here. So let's see what happens. It's gonna go. Come on, baby. It should start way, way easier than this, obviously. putting as many miles on this guy as I can this year so just got to fix up these few little things and I'm, I'm scared to pull this stupid fuel tank off because that's just a to me it seems like a big job it's probably nothing I could put another tank somewhere else but being that it's a rumble seat car I don't want to take up this space I really don't want the fuel tank in the back of the car um, I know there's a a 32 Ford conversion where the fuel tank sits back here but then since this is a model a engine it doesn't have a fuel pump on it so I'd have to put an electric fuel pump six volt fuel pump I'm just not sure if I can regulate it down enough because this is a gravity feed system now so I'm still really new at the model a stuff so I'm sure there's a way to do it just got to spend the time do the research and figure it out but uh, I think what I'm going to start on now, just the simple stuff, uh, I'm going to get the headlights working, hopefully. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so I got the driver's side, uh, what do you call this thing, the reflector, the lens, super easy to get off, there's just a little, this little guy here, you just pop that back and then the, the lens and the ring pop out. Uh, when I pulled the reflector out, I noticed the the plug in the back there. It's uh, it's pretty much melted. So I got to see if I can put that back where it's supposed to be, or crawl up there. Top two shelves. That's basically all Model A uh, extra bits. So I'm not sure if I got any of these these connections in there, but I'll jump in into the scissor lift. Catch a ride up there, take a look. If I can't get this figured out, but uh, yeah, I don't like the bare wires that are there either. So figure that out, see what I can do, and uh, hopefully I can get some uh, lights going here. Okay, so I decided to abort the headlight uh, repair situation here. Uh, something weird is going on with this car. Uh, looking through some of the wiring diagrams 
since this guy has the two, the one in the center and the one socket up above, these typically, that type of headlight doesn't come with cars with cowl lights. Um, looking through one of my books here, you probably can't see it, but uh, the switch, which is that guy right there, it's different between the two different types of uh, systems. So, unfortunately, in order to figure out which one that is, I gotta pull this apart. Uh, it's riveted in. I have a whole bunch of extra ones, so I'll probably just go through and find one that works. Um, also, that's that socket that was melted, this part here, so it's just busted everywhere. So I'm not even gonna bother trying to fix this one. I found one in my stash of stuff, but uh, it's, it's not here anymore, but uh, it's in worse shape than this one. It's probably an original one from uh, the 30s, so it basically fell apart as soon as I tried doing anything with it. So I'm also thinking I'm just going to go ahead and do a, a six volt halogen upgrade. This pigtail is like 25, 30 bucks. I can get the upgraded kit for just a few more dollars. So I'll likely go that route. So then I decided let's put some glass in. So got the driver's side in. Um, I was trying to figure out how to get this piece of glass into this frame. Didn't fit. So I did some research. This top cover here has to come off. And of course, we got one screw that came out and two that broke off. So I need to find a, we got, I gotta get the proper tap so I can drill them out, retap them. I'm gonna have to oversize it a little bit. No big deal, but uh, the window works great. Everything's fine, so that's gonna help. Uh, the upper weather stripping was falling apart, so I re-glued that, just letting it set. So I'm gonna go on to the other side. Luckily, this one's already got two of the top screws out of it. Like that one's gone, that one's gone, and that one's probably gonna break. But I know what to do now. And then this, uh, this deal here, that's. I would assume that it would be a roller, but it actually doesn't roll. It just sits there static. And then that's where the track goes. So I'll pull that apart, put that piece of glass in, and then put these guys in. So I'm getting something done anyway. It's better than nothing. All right, got the passenger side in. Uh, yes, I did break this one. All good, I gotta do the other two on that side anyways. I, I may as well do them all the same. Uh, this one, there's this rubber gasket in here between this channel and the glass. They say to add oil to it so it'll swell. So I'm just letting that one sit. The other side, it held instantly. Uh, there was a bit of oil on the, on the glass itself, so maybe that's helped it, but just gonna let this one sit. It says sit for 24 hours before using it. So, so moving on to the quarter glass windows. And then I realized that I need to nail my car back together. There's a, obviously back in the day, there's nails all over this thing. I gotta pull all those out. Uh, this brace isn't even attached. There's a piece missing underneath here. But all these little holes here, that's where nails used to be. So that's all loose in there. So when I go to put my garnish molding on, uh, this guy, because the window itself gets sandwiched in there and then there's a rubber gasket that goes around the window. Then that gets sandwiched on the inside to hold everything together. And then I'm just gonna throw some, whatever, some sheet metal screws, some pan head screws in there just for the time being, till I have to do the interior. Then it'll all come apart again. But uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting to have to dig out a hammer and some nails to work on this guy, but I guess that was technology back 90 some years ago. Moving forward, I managed to get this guy up on the hoist. Uh, that way I can see what it needs underneath. 
I uh, got the windows all figured out other than this guy here. I still have to, uh, have to replace this chunk of oak here, which I found a piece of oak laying around, so I'll make that one work. The glass is ready to go in. Uh, I got the, that quarter window in and the back one in. Initially, I thought I had the wrong glass, but there's a specific way it fits. So when I put that one in, I'm like, oh man, I got the wrong glass. So I was all upset. Then I thought about it, looked at it some more. I had to flip it and rotate it and it's good. Uh, these guys here, I was having issues with. This one, yeah, it broke. But I managed to find a, uh, an interior screw pack that I had bought. I forgot I even had it. Found it, it had the right screws in it, so I had to drill and tap this one and then two on the other side. But this one, this window works just as good as the other one. Seals nicely, rolls up incredibly well. So that's all good. Finish up that quarter window, clean the glass, and then that part is done. Uh, I'm gonna lift it up, but I'm gonna show you what's going on underneath here. I found a couple things that, uh, I don't know if it's interesting or not. It's kind of a hassle actually, but here. Hold on. Okay, so I found where my oil leak was and it's uh, it's the front seal there, which is kind of what I was expecting since that crank pulley was bent or uh, broken rather. No big deal. Uh, looks like the back one's leaking a bit too. So I have extra gasket sets for this thing. I want to flush, ch uh, change the oil anyway, because you know, how long it had been sitting, then we put the oil in it to get it to run and who knows, right? So it needs an oil change. Ah, uh, that carburetor's leaking like crazy, so I know what I gotta do there. Actually, everything leaks on this thing. Transmission's leaking like crazy. I have gasket sets, I could redo that. Uh, the U-joint is also leaking. There again, I have gasket sets for that. The banjo's leaking. Again, more gaskets. That was a nice thing about winning at auction few years back that I got so many spare parts. Uh, noticed this shock. That's no good. Uh, these things are rebuildable. There's O-rings in there. There's a special oil you gotta put in these things. Uh, I don't have the oil, but I have a bunch of those extra shocks. So that's, that's handy. Also noticed, uh, when they had done work on this thing, Whoever knows, like, I don't know when, but whenever it was done, these are the inner wheel wells. They just folded them over, whatever, welded them in. Not a whole lot of uh, care was given to this, but you know, it looks good from the top side. So that's all that really matters, I guess. I'm not sure if I'm gonna mess with that. Uh, it looks like I'm missing a brace of some sort here you'd think there'd be something across instead of this bracket just hanging out in the middle of nowhere uh, a bunch of new panels the rumble seat rear rumble seat floor is new all this is new and then that's original so that's good because the serial number on this thing is actually on the top side of this one I haven't actually checked to see if the serial number matches the engine, but frankly, I don't care. But yeah, just uh, look after some of these leaks. That's a new style brake switch, which we put that in so we can go for a cruise last year with, you know, it's not original by any means, of course, but it serves a purpose. It made the lights blink, so that's what we wanted. Uh, speaking of lights, I don't know if you can see that, but I ended up changing the lenses last night, so they look pretty good. They're not lined up at all. I'm going to have to do some adjusting on there. Minor details. Uh, what else? I got to adjust the brakes because I don't know which one it is, but one of them vibrates like crazy. So I'm assuming one of them is too tight. Get that figured out. Give her a good grease job. 
This thing's got different styles of uh, Zerks on it too. So if you look here, hang on. This Zerk here, that's an original Model A Zerk. You can see it's different than this one. And then I'm missing this one altogether. Need a special adapter in your grease gun to make this, to, to actually put grease into this type. And then of course this is your traditional type. So at least I can get grease in it. That actually that bushing looks like it's pretty much hammered out. Uh, well that one's got grease in it, so that's good. But yeah, just need some maintenance. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really digging the washers that they put on these rims. They just found random random square bits of steel with a hole in it and uh, you know that's good enough. I actually went and bought these. These are uh, what do they actually call it? They are called Model A Ford Lug Nut Washer. So it's a beveled washer that'll take place of this ugly stuff here. So once I pull all the wheels off, check all the brakes. I gotta, I gotta check all the brakes anyway for to get this thing safetyed. And I'm likely gonna just repaint all those. I know I got a probably a bad tube on this side. This one's new. Oh, here comes Dave. Anyway. This one's new, valve stem's nice and straight. Unfortunately, this one here, the way the valve stem is pointing, the tube is slipped inside. So hopefully I can get that repositioned back and uh, save that tube, because those things aren't cheap. But she's, uh, she's looking good. Like I say, a couple minor things to worry about and then, and then she's good to hit the highway. Just wanted to show you guys something here. I pulled this tire off because that, that tube is obviously slipped in it. And while I had it off, I figured I should just check the brakes, see what they're like. These things are brand new. That's the e-brake drum here. These are all, uh, what the heck do you call? I know you can, you rivet these back to the drums themselves, or to the uh, the shoes themselves. But these are in excellent shape. This uh, the reason, another reason why I took this wheel off is, like I say, this shock, that guy there, he's he's toast. But like I say, I got a bunch up there, so I'll just do the climb and go grab one that matches and uh, see how that goes. Drums are in really nice shape. Trying to find out if I'm supposed to have any kind of uh, grease in here, which I would think I should, but doing some research, I don't think it's supposed to run dry, but like I say, I'm, I'm totally new to these Model A things, so I'll let you know what I come up with when it comes to that. Morning, everybody. Uh, just wanted to try something today. Last night, I was messing around on this guy. I added this little safety fuse to my starter. Uh, it's basically got a 30 amp fuse in here. In case something happens, it'll blow the fuse instead of burning the car down. Uh, that's a bonus. Changed out the spark plugs last night. The other day, I was trying to crank this thing over and I ended up melting the positive ground. No, sorry. This is a positive ground system. I ended up melting the negative terminal right off the battery cable. So I put a new one on. I'm gonna try a cold start. I haven't started this thing yet today, so I'm kinda curious to see what's gonna happen. I know it starts a lot better than, than it did, but let's see what happens this time. That I can live with. That's the way it's supposed to start. 
That's just awesome. Cool, just wanted to show you guys that. Okay, got the drum back on. Uh, ended up greasing that inner bearing there in the drum. Uh, actually reached out to Matt from Iron Trap. He's, uh, if anybody knows Matt, he's obviously the Model A guru. He says obviously you need oil in there, or grease in there rather. And I'm, I knew I did, I just wanted to verify. Like I say, I'm, I'm super new at these Model A's. So grease that all up, put it all back together. Uh, changed out the shock. This one is nice and tight compared to how it was before. This this is the one that I pulled off of it and there's a there's a whole lot of slack in there. Uh, still gotta fill that one up with oil. Uh, hydraulic jack oil is what you can use in there. Originally they used uh, glycerin. We don't have any of that. So jack, uh, jack oil it is. Uh, when I had to change that shock, The arm, okay, see, so there's this this little locking knob here, this little tab here. This is where the bolt goes through. This was facing the wrong direction, so I just took the guts apart, swapped everything over. That one is, I think that one was rebuilt at one time, just it doesn't have any fluid in it, like I said. It's got new O-rings, everything in it. But yeah, just some of my, uh, some of my levers and shocks and stuff like that. Super handy to have stuff like this kicking around because you never know when you're gonna need it. And all these things are rebuildable. So those are gonna be handy on future projects. <clears throat> um, considering this drum had no grease in it, I'm obviously gonna check the other side and the fronts. So make sure everything's all greased up, make sure everything's good. This brake was brand new, and I'm assuming the other three are as well. I just want to double check. But yeah, it's uh, it's getting closer. The brake rods, being that this is a mechanical brake system, they're all free. I do have an issue under here. This is my emergency brake. There's this little, it's like the locking cog here that kicks into the uh, the teeth. I think I might be missing a spring because it doesn't return. There's a button on top of the the uh, lever there itself. You push that and it just stays down. So I think I need a return spring of some sort on there. But I'll figure all that out. I probably have one of those in stock somewhere. But yeah, she's coming together. Still gotta fix this uh, tube on this tire. Get that all done, throw it back in the car, move on to the next side. I haven't been working on this guy full time. It's uh, basically just after hours, stuff in the shop takes priority. But uh, got that tire back on, changed the tube, or uh, repositioned the tube so it's good. Did this one, pulled the bearings out, same thing. Uh, Brakes are all brand new again. This shock is also not good. Uh, well, it's it's fine, I just gotta put some fluid in it. You can see it in behind there. I guess it's kind of dark, but. Uh, same as this side. <clears throat> this is the rim that had all those big ugly washers on there. So I bought those little, they're like a, a cup. You can see they kind of fit in behind the lug themselves. This particular hub, all the studs were loose, so Pulled everything off as an assembly, bolted it all together so it was all true, and then I welded the studs back on from the back. Um, you know, it is what it is. The drums are good, everything's fine there. And again, that shock, this shock is uh, not doing what it's supposed to be. But something cool about this, is they've updated the, the wheel bearings. They never did come with this uh, tapered bearing like this, that's for sure. Uh, again, here's the shock from this side and there's no shock action there. So pull out that little plug up there. Dave's bringing me some uh, hydraulic jack oil tomorrow. Put this guy all back together. And then I gotta adjust all the brakes. This one, 
this one clearly hadn't even done any braking at all. You can still see the, the stamping on the brake shoes. And like I said, everything's brand new, so it's just an absolute bonus. So I'm pretty excited about that. A couple other things that I've been working on. I noticed, sorry for the, all the walking around. I don't know if you can tell on camera here, but if you look at the axle, it's nice and level. I got equal air pressure on both sides, but the body is, is tipped. So, and it's, it's hard to judge it too because the bumper itself is loose. So this side of the bumper is obviously lower. But I figured out how I'm gonna fix that. So once I get that wheel on, get it back in the air, I'll uh, try and figure out how to square up my body a little bit. I ended up having to rebuild uh, the other three shocks as well. Um, luckily, I had all the parts to do it. I have, these are upgraded O-rings for the, uh, basically for this, this section here. Then you got your cap that goes over it. The bigger O-ring goes along the bottom here and then there's the, the, the cover, uh, this sort of thing. So, once you screw all that together, the O-ring seals that. Um, I put pipe dope on there as well, just to help from uh, any potential leaks. So, that was awesome. Handy to have all this stuff. So now I've got four, uh, where are you, right here. Four shocks that are all good. I didn't paint them black, I just clear coated them. Kept them natural. Uh, this one I still have, I gotta put the link on it. So, you can see now it's actually got some resistance to it. I'm not sure how much of a difference it's gonna make in the ride, to be honest with you. Like, 45 miles an hour is top speed in this thing, and it's not like I'm gonna be uh, off-roading this stupid thing, so. So basically, I greased up these rubber, uh, I guess they're a, a ball of some sort. They go over top of the uh, the shock ball, and then I clamp these, these guys on here. So basically, finished product is, is that there. So I'm gonna have all four shocks that are gonna be functioning, so that'll be nice. And then I'm gonna go to the back of the car and figure out how I'm gonna straighten the body out uh, compared to the axle. So that's gonna be next. All right, so I was messing around last night and I honestly can't tell you exactly what I did to level this car out. Um, it just kind of happened. I undid the, there's the two U-bolts that hold the, the, uh, the shock in place. Undid those, kind of pulled things around, twisted things, and it worked. Um, pretty simple, but I can't really tell you exactly what I did to make it happen. Uh, also, straighten out the bumper. It was, it was tweaked pretty bad, so I had to shim the front on that side. No big deal. Uh, put my handle in for the rumble seat. This was just sitting in a box of parts that I had that came with the car. and Just had to do a little bit of modifying on the, the trunk lid itself. There was no hole big enough. Oh, looks like I'm scratching my paint here. I should probably put a bezel or a, a rubber behind that, but whatever the case, that's in and works. So now I don't have to reach through the car and pop it up. I also straightened out the front bumper. It was pretty, pretty out of alignment as well. So that's nice and even. Just little piddly things. Just trying to use the time that I have for the car to be in the shop, make full use of it. So I still have some major stuff to do like the fuel tank, the crank pulley the oil pan, stuff like that. But I'll probably take it to the other shop, pull the tank out, because it's gonna be down for however long it takes me to get that tank figured out. But yeah, just uh, 
playing around. I kind of, I don't know why I did it, but I knew it was going to come off eventually. There was that big bubble of Bondo here. So I popped it off. It has to get fixed anyway. So now at least I got a, a paint sample that I could take into the body shop. Fix that up, make it look better than it is. Good enough. Well, I guess time's up for this guy. He, uh, he needs to go away. We got other stuff that's more important to get in here. But I did mess around with a few things while it was in here. I uh, put the rearview mirror on. Uh, I put new, I don't know what you'd even call these, but they're the, what are those called? Anyway, whatever they are, I changed them. I put, where is it, here? It's a rubber bumper for the door. Another one on the bottom side. I uh, gotta pull my rumble seat handle off. I found a, a rubber bezel that goes around it. Plus I think I might have the handle clocked in the wrong direction. Uh, thinking about changing the color of the tires or the, the rims. Because obviously my spares need to get blasted and redone anyway. So just toying with different options for colors. I got new center caps or hub caps. The lug nuts are fine. I'll just polish them up. Just trying to figure out what color I want to go with. Added a little bit of bling to the engine. I had these head covers, these acorns for the head bolts. So little, little minor details like that. Got to order my kit for the headlights. I'm going to convert it to six volt halogen. And then I need to put a signal switch in it, stuff like that. So, but I'm not doing any of that stuff because when it's time to pull the, the fuel tank out, we're attached to the fuel tank with the steering column. So I gotta undo the box, lay the column down, pull it out from the inside. But that I can do at the other shop. Get this thing up on jack stands, get the tires off, get them blasted, whatever. But yeah, she's gotta go for now. Had a good run, but you know, it doesn't make, make us any money in here. So gotta go bring something else in.